be with us in evangelistic service. September the 12th at 10 o'clock there will be a ladies conference in Slidell. I'm leaving the Winn-Dixie and Walker at 8.30. There's a sign-up sheet, so sign up if you want to go. We'll make some type of arrangements for, um, it's back there, Sister Gail. Brother Stewart assured me it's back there. You just hadn't seen it yet. So, it's back there. That's it. Hallelujah, that's all we know. Thank you, Jesus. Are y'all ready to worship? Hallelujah. God is good. If you have a need in your body, come to the front. We'll pray for you.
like our Jesus. Hallelujah. They give him a hundred percent tonight in worship. Hallelujah. Say the LSU will soon start their season along with my favorite, and that would be the Walker Wildcats. And we are all excited and we're pumped. We got a new field, we got a new coach. My son's pretty awesome. At least I think so. <laughs> Along with him. And when I go to one of those football games, everybody knows that that little or that big woman set right there is hollering for number five. So I want the world to know that I root for Jesus. Yeah. That I worship him and I praise him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So let's give God all we have tonight. Hallelujah. Glory.
us when the water is trouble eating it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Some of us don't get in when the water is trouble. And we go home the same way we came. But blessed are those who have faith. And they jump in. Because they won't leave here the same as they came. Because of that wonderful, precious name of Jesus Christ. Oh, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I don't understand why the power comes and goes like it does sometimes. I don't have to know. He's God, and I'm just me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But I feel like if you had just a little bit of faith, God did what you want. Because He spoke to me, He said, Where's your faith? Where's your brain of mustard seed? Praise the Lord. Sometimes preachers, I said it this morning, sometimes we're just not walking in the spirit like we ought to. And God has to deal with us a little bit. Sometimes you got to slap me on the head. I, I will tell you the truth because I'm scared to death I'm going to make a mistake. But you know what? That's a weakness. Faith is just stepping out there. Yes. And saying, I don't care how stupid I sound or how silly I look. I'm going to do what you said to me, God. Yes, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. Yes, yes. Oh, my God. I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. If you was here and you needed anything, you should have just broken and run to this altar. And said, oh, my God. I'm running to your throne room. I'm running to your throne room, God. Hallelujah. I need whatever you got. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. See, sometimes I have to go to the throne room and ask for faith. Because my humanity is so weak in faith. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Are we going to sing again? I don't think I want you to sing again. Brother Perry. Brother Perry. Praise the Lord. I'm, I'm on. I'm going to sing all the goodie now. He already knows what he's supposed to sing. Uh, I got a man back here who wants to hear all the goodie. She can sing more than one. She can sing more than one. One that reaches way down in the hall. Praise the Lord. And I'll say God bless you, Brother Perry. My days are filled with laughter. Oh, my heart is on your peace. I've traveled far, still there is far to go. In my heart there is a longing to look up on your face. 
bless those who have God. We ask you to give you society. Amen. 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 Amen.
But I'm going to try to preach to you tonight. You talk about troubled water. I'm going to talk about that pool a little bit tonight. I'm going to talk about that pool. If you have your Bibles, I'd like you to turn with me, and I'm not going to preach long tonight. John 5 and 6, 5th chapter, the 6th verse. I'm going to read one portion of the scripture, and I'm going to let you sit down. Stand just for the reading of this one scripture, if you please, tonight, and reverence to God if you can. John chapter 5 and verse number 6. And when Jesus saw him lie, had an appointment with God. Wasn't just anybody there because there was a lot of folk. But there was one case. The Bible said knew that he had been there a long time. God knows where you are tonight. God knows the need that you have tonight. And he knows where you sit. And the Bible said, and he saith unto him, now watch this, will thou be made whole? He came to this man with a question. Are you ready to turn things around? Are you ready to change your destiny? Yes. Are you ready to find a new direction? It wasn't up to God because God was there. Right. It was up to the individual to let God be God. Yeah. Yeah. I want to just for a few moments talk to you on something tonight. Who has the answer? Master, I thank you for allowing me to be in this pulpit with oh, this precious man of God and his family tonight. Please hide me behind town, real God. Help me that only preach truth. For thy glory and thy word, sake in Jesus' name. We call it done and you may be seen tonight. Special occasion, special time. John 5 and 1. After this, there was a feast of the Jews. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. But going to Jerusalem, and I do not know if the disciples were there or not, the Bible did not recall. But perhaps they were there. Special occasion time. Jesus goes to a feast in the city of Jerusalem. He had, but he had business outside the city of Jerusalem. And somewhere in perhaps the crowd. Bishop, he shuts out the door because his destiny was not at the feast. Amen. His urgency was not just being at the feast. He was there because of the need. Right. <laughs> the Bible talks about there is in Jerusalem by the sheep market a place or a pool. Which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. A rather large place, if you please. Let's go to the, the pool of Bethesda for a moment. I want you to get a picture of what was there. It was not a pleasant place to be. The Bible said it was a sheep market, and the animals would come and they would drink. And they were gathered around the pool, and it was a mud hole and, in fact, a stinky mess. A lovely place, if you please. It was on the edge of Jerusalem. And the Bible called it again a sheep market. A place of rejection. Muddy, perhaps. Order like you've never smelt before. Folks that perhaps were cringy and unclean. And many perhaps never had a bath for a long time. A very unpleasant place to be. The attraction was me. They wasn't there just to be there, but they were there with a purpose. Because they knew that this particular place, at a certain time of the year, the angel of God would trouble the water, the bishop said. And the first one in would be made whole of whatever disease he had. It was an attraction. A chance 
But if you was at the bottom of the hill, you had a better chance. Depending on your position. And the Bible said that the first one in would be made whole of whatever disease he had. The Bible said in this place, hot, destitute, lonely, tears and heartaches and troubles and problems and sorrows, lay a great multitude of important folk. They were blind. They were hot. They were weird. But they were there with the same purpose. Waiting. Waiting for the way of the Lord. <coughs> Many folks are waiting. That's right. Waiting for a preacher. Waiting for a doctor. Waiting for a lawyer. Waiting for everything but the master. Sometimes we get caught up in the waiting crowd. Our expectation is on everything but God. In the waiting crowd. We are lost in destiny. Never expecting the Lord to come by. Especially where I live. Especially in the condition that surrounds me. And the multitude that is in the fall. And my chances are so little. But my God is so great. You cannot lock God in. Waiting for an angel to come down at a certain season into the pool and to trouble the water. Waiting for an answer. Knowing if I would be, if I would be, if I would be the first one in. I'd be made whole. But look at the multitude that is ahead of me. So I'm just going to have to stay in the waiting crowd. Not expecting anything to happen today. Never expecting the King of King and the Lord of Lords oh, to come by God. and touch us. No, not expecting that. I'm waiting for something. I'm waiting. Sometimes we get caught up, friend. And we have everything figured out how God can, when God can, and why God can. Don't put God in your testimony. He'll show up when you don't think he's around. Come on. Right. Hallelujah. John 5 and 5. The Bible talks about a certain man, but not just an any And I want you to understand, I have made up my mind, I am not just an anybody. If your Holy Ghost feel baptized in Jesus' name, Hello, you're not an anybody. That's right. Yeah. You are a somebody. That's somebody. And you are a candidate for the master to come behind. If yes. he's going to come to your house, he'll come to your house. If yes. he's going to get in your automobile, he'll get in your automobile. If he's going to go to work to find you, he'll go to your job. All the other stuff. I'm telling you, he's not. Hallelujah. Don't tie him into your test tube. Don't tie him into your destiny. Because you never know. A certain man was there. Oh, yes. Bible said this man had an infirmity for 38 years. Yeah. Long yeah. waiting yeah. years. Yeah. 38 years. But here's a great thing. He never gave up. He had a mindset. If it don't happen today, it'll happen tomorrow. But all I know, Sunday, yeah. I'm going to be in that water.
the type of deliverance. Hope doesn't move God, but faith does. I just firmly to believe that in this man's heart there was more than hope. I believe there was some faith. Locked up in the chart. Say someday God lay there in the midnight hour you're going to heal me someday. You're going to touch me someday. You're going to deliver me someday. You're going to meet my need someday. You're going to save my life someday. You're going to go. I don't know where it comes, but I know you're going to do it. Someday. How many prayers did he pray lay in that dirty, muddy, stinking mess laying on that cot All right, all right. Out of a multitude of people, the master heard. A certain man. Three in years. You see, folks, I don't want to be part of the norm. That will get the job done. Come on. You can't get caught up in the waiting crowd. Because if you do, you're going to wait a long time. You need to get them the expecting crowds, the miracle working crowd, the impossible crowd, and said, I know what God can and God will do. you got to get in the now. You don't have to wait any longer because this perhaps could be the day that you can never be the same again. Here's a question. I am tired of somebody else getting what I need from God. Come on. Sit in the church and I see people healed. I see people blessed. I see people being restored. I see people getting all kinds of things and miracles from God. I'm tired of somebody else taking my Yes, yes, yes. I'm ready to step up to the plate. We look around in the church and we see God do so many things for everybody else. And then you leave and say, why didn't God heal me tonight? He wanted to. Yeah. He was at the pool today. He wanted to. Yeah. But you see, he was in the waiting crowd and God no longer waiting. He already stayed. Yeah. Right. And if you make up your mind that this is the day the Lord has made, and I'm going to be glad in it. I'm going to receive it. I'm an expectation crowd. I'm in the miracle working crowd. I'm not in the north crowd. It's different with me today. Don't make up your mind. A certain man. A certain man. You see, Lord, come by this place today. Number one, all I need to do is hear your voice. Well, I hate to disappoint you, but how many times have you heard his voice? Every time the ministry, the bishop, That's right. comes to this poor people. Come on. You look at him and say, Brother Netherfield, preached a good sermon tonight. You don't realize it wasn't Brother Netherfield. You didn't recognize the presence of the Lord. Come on.
I don't want to be entertained. Yes. But I want to be detained by God. Yes. And when I'm detained by the Holy Ghost, I'm going to get what I need from the Lord. Yes. Hello. I don't want to be a waiter any longer. You, know? you see, I need change. All right. But I got to make up my own mind. When I want you. Hebrews 3 and 7 made this statement. Wherefore, and the whole our God said, today if you hear his words, or hear my voice. Today. Every time you walk in here, God speaks to you. Every time. Not a time you've ever been in this service. In this church, that God did speak to you. That's right. If you left without the needs met, it was your own fault. Bible said five and six, my text. But when Jesus saw him lie there, now let's get to where he was at. Jesus comes from the feast. Walks down the dusty road from Jerusalem to a, a who? A sheep market. A dirty place. An unclean place. A hardened place. Come on. And Jesus makes his way. He had business where there's need. He comes to where there's need. And he comes to the pool of the fest. At the bottom of that pool, animals all around. He looks upon the hillside and he sees a man. I want him to see me in the house tonight. I want him to know that I'm in the house tonight. I want his presence to find my, I want to make that connection. So he begins to make his way up the hill. And to do so, he has to step over some blind, some hog, some lame, some hurting. Hello. Come on, come on. But he had a cannon. And you can be in the crowd tonight, and we got a quick word who's here and who's not here. All right. Sometimes God's got to walk around some folk to get to you, but he'll get to you. Because if you're a candidate, he's here to meet with you. He begins to walk over the crowd. Tears, perhaps, in the eyes of men, the moment, and the groaning, and the complaining, and whatever. But one thing, nobody in that church recognized Jesus. Mm. Nobody in that church knew that he was even there for the native field. So why are you calling it church? Because they were waiting for God to heal. They were waiting on the angel to talk. It was a church. A hurting church. A desperate church. And he had to step over some members to get to him. And finally, he comes beside this lame man. And he looks at him. Had to look down if he breathes. Had he ever been so low, he had to look down to find you. Mm. Things are not always high. Things are not always low. Sometimes we forget because we say to God, we think, well, stay up here all the time. That's not so. I wish that was so. But you see, if there wasn't a down, I would appreciate that. That's right. This year had been a rough year. Since we left this year, we've been several weeks. I only went 
after two weeks, several weeks, we stayed around the Jennings and Oakdale and, and LeBron, that area, preaching for church after church. In this trip, when we left here, my Fox went out and they told me to throw it away, a $3,700 box. But God showed me in a dream one night what to do to the box. I said, go get your mat. And I thought I was crazy, Bishop. Said, I thought I was. I then went to the RV place and they said, the, the Norco said, throw it out. I said, $3,700. I I went home and I looked at that little part that was broken. And I went to bed and I had a dream about a madman. And then I went back to sleep and woke up the next morning. I couldn't shake it. Three o'clock in the afternoon, I said, I can't I'm going to go get me a madman. I went down to Steins and I said, sir, I need a madman. He said, what's the pull? I said, I don't know. He said, how about a 12 pound? I said, that'll work. Uh, he gave me a 12 pound madman that came home and put the pot back.
See, you got to hear what God got to say. Yes. Sometimes it's not lightning and it's not a big voice and it's not a, it's a little still small voice. Yes, yes, yes. That's true. And Jesus didn't talk to the whole crowd, but he talked to a man. And he said, right.
rises, gets to his feet, and he picks up the bed. Where are you going? He said, I got the bed. First, he told me to rise. Second, he said, get the bed. And third, he said, take the bed down here. I'm taking my bed down the hill. I'm taking my trouble down the hill. I'm taking my yesterday down the hill. I'm taking my sorrow down the hill. I'm taking my problem down the hill. I'm taking my impossibility down the hill. I'm taking it down the hill. I'm tired of being in the shadow. I'm tired of being in the shadow. And he grabbed that car. And he took the car anything. But I'll give the hill gun fire. I think mean, they were rumbling in the house. Yes. Nobody still knew who it was. But it wasn't the same as everybody else. And he took his bed and began to go down the hill. You see, the Lord would have loved to have told him, Sir, you don't have to wait on me. You see, I am he. I am the he. I am the I am the great I am. I am your answer. I am your life. I am your joy. I am your destiny. I am your future. I am the great I am the silent church. There is no other but I. Glory. Ain't nobody can do it like the Lord. Amen. Amen. He'll come to wherever you want to be. I don't care what your problem is. I don't care how long you've been there. I don't care how many mistakes you made. I don't care how many times you might have failed. I don't care. He'll come to your house tonight and to your life. He took up his bed. And he went down the hill. And I don't believe he was just walking. I believe he was dancing. Yes. I know I'd have been shouting. I'd have been hollering. I'd have been screaming. I'd have been all my buddies down the hill. And watch me all these years. Said, John, everything's going to be all right. Yes. If the Lord to me, come on, man. We can do it. 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 This I Together we can do and supersede. Amen.
Come on, come on. Let's go. The Bible said who was healed and was healed was not who it was. But Jesus had conveyed himself away from the multitude being in that place. Now somebody said, why would Jesus hide himself and, 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 and not, not get involved in the multitude? Because everybody on the hill wouldn't let him leave. He'd have had the Bible there for 23,000 years. <laughs> so he quietly, after he healed the man, he quietly stepped over them again. Because you see, there was no other faith, and he just went down to the <laughs> and walked to the other dusty sandy fields, headed towards Jerusalem again. The next time he meets the man in Jerusalem, and Jesus found him in the temple in Jerusalem, about where the feast was. And behold, he said unto him, Thou art made whole. And he said, let me give you a remedy to keep you healed. He said, what's the remedy, Lord? I don't want to be back with you. Send them all. Uh -huh. Send them all. Yeah. Lest the worst thing come up. Well, you think you was in trouble yesterday? That's right. Not near what you're going to be. That's right. And the Bible said, and then the man departed and told the Jews, said, I know who told me. To take up my bed. Said, who was it? Especially the Sabbath. Who was it? His name is called Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. That name is wonderful. That name is powerful. That name makes him the counselor. That name makes him the healer. I don't understand folks. You see, the church and religious world will pray for one another, but nobody ever prays for one another in the name of the pastor or the name of the denomination. Isn't it a strange phenomenon when they pray and they are mock us for being baptized in Jesus' name? But they won't pray for that Jesus' name. Come on. If you're going to use that name to cast out devils, you're going to use that name to cure infirmities, you're going to use that name to bind the enemy that comes against you, then use that name in the battle strength and take it off to you and carry it with you. Put that devil on everybody you know. All right. It's an inheritance name. Yeah. Come, on. Come on. Come on. You can say it all you want to, but to possess it makes the difference. Come on. Yes. I don't just say in Jesus' name, I live in Jesus' name. Yeah. At times, if you can get in trouble, you don't have time to say in Jesus' name. Yeah. All you've got to do is think about it. Amen. Yeah. Because it's a possessive thing. Yeah. It makes me a type of deity. It gives me an experience that the Bible calls me a son and an heir and a joint heir. You know what that tells me, Brother Manville? There is no separation in me. When I call the name of the Lord, he is a son.
we were talking about building a church in the back, leading the bank of heaven. You don't need no bank. God has already got the man set up with you, brother. Oh.
there is a state of depression in here tonight. Somebody is depressed. Somebody keeps thinking, am I really saved? Am I really of God? Why come God don't do this? Why come God don't do that? Because you're so depressed tonight that you can't get up and rise. You can take your bed down and get up God's And God heals depression. When my child got killed and the doctor put me on depression medicine, I was in my house and I felt like God spoke to me and said, I don't want you to take any more tears. And I didn't take the more. The doctor said, What do you think? You can't get off of it. I said, Guess what? Most of my mom took it. And I didn't take it. Church mighty in the pulling down stronghold.